Bull trout are the native trout species here in the Red Deer River watershed and you'll find them in the upper reaches where we are today. The Red Deer River is so unique in how it starts with this cold water, rocky sort of river up in the headwaters and how it changes to that slow meandering muddy river through Drumheller. And up here where we are, we have this native bull trout population. Unfortunately, um, Alberta's bull trout are considered threatened and so we're working with partners to help recover them. The bull trout are struggling here. It's not healthy at this point. Mostly a temperature, uh, the presence of brook trout and fragmentation. You look at the culvert upstream here, there's a huge barrier. They can't move upstream. They can't move to their, their spawning grounds. When we're talking about stream crossings, there is a huge spectrum of the type of crossings that are out there. Some of them are these culverts on major roadways like this. Some might be fords or just low level crossings on off highway vehicle trails, for example. Both can cause impacts, whether it's fragmentation or, or sedimentation. So that mud and sediment run off into the creek. And both are really important and we want information on them. Uh, Logan Creek, where we're sitting today, was identified as a very high priority to address. In 2017, we sampled this creek as part of a broader sampling program in the upper Red Deer River, looking at bull trout and where they're fragmented by these culverts. And uh, we found bull trout below the culvert and no fish upstream. So it's one of the higher priority areas because there is great habitat available upstream. They just can't get to it. It happens that we have 244 monitoring sites that are found within our studies. We've got up to five years of data collected already. So we have five full years of summertime water temperature data, usually starting in May, going to October. With those water temperature loggers, they take a water temperature uh, reading every hour on the hour, and it's the max and min throughout that hour. So that's what the model's built on is actual real water temperature data, not modeled off of air temperature. Hybridization occurs when there are two fish species from the same genus. So genus can uh, encompass multiple species, uh, but it allows fish species like brook trout and bull trout to procreate together, uh, produce young together. So what happens for hybridization is since brook trout and bull trout are from the same genus, their eggs and sperm can mix and can successfully create young. However, these youngs that are uh, created are often infertile or their fertility is greatly reduced. So this is essentially just wiping out uh, slowly the generations of bull trout that are spotting. So if you have uh, it's typically it's these female bull trout lay their eggs and these uh, super competitive brook trout males can come in and fertilize them. And that essentially just wipes out all of the reproductive energy that the bull trout, the female bull trout just put into the stream, uh, given all her young will no longer be able to reproduce and produce viable bull trout. Part of our role as the Watershed Alliance is to help connect the dots between issues. So while we're here today to talk about native trout recovery with our partners, we recognize that that conversation is interlinked with other watershed conversations. Questions like, how do we ensure safe, secure drinking water supplies for our communities? How might we ensure reliable quality water supplies for various sectors? These are interlinked conversations and how we manage the upper and lower regions of the Red Deer River watershed will play a major role in how we address those challenges. One of the ways transportation is um, 
you know, mitigating impacts is by hiring professional biologists, fisheries biologists to complete fish and fish habitat assessments. Through that, we're able to identify if there are you know, critical, rare, limiting habitat that we might want to avoid in our designs. And once we have that figured out and we use what, uh, it's a model that Transportation actually developed called the Flow Profile Tool, and it helps us determine if the design that we've um, come up with will pass fish, if the velocity going through that culvert, for example, is matching the channel velocity, then um, we can feel pretty confident about bringing that project to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans and presenting it that it's going to benefit, it's not going to cause any harmful alteration or destruction or disturbance to the fisheries. We believe that we should really uh, be cognizant of the amount of impact that we're having on a, a fish, specifically a bull trout. As anglers, we should be uh, cognizant that when we go out fishing uh, if, during hot weather, uh, times of low water flow, uh, actually excessive handling times, fishing with treble hooks, all those actually have impacts on the survivability of the fish. So it's such a huge land mass, especially when you compare it against the eastern slopes as a whole. Um, essentially, we work with the other agencies that find, okay, well, where are the hot spots? Where can we actually make the, or get the most bang for our buck? Uh, and again, whether that be with uh, actually direct dollar support or with volunteers and just basically start chiseling away at this. If we sit back and say, you know what, we can't fix everything and just uh, uh, essentially go into a sheltered mode, it doesn't help anyone. Uh, go out, get the projects done, get the boots on the ground going and start building up that uh, network as well as community itself and making them aware that yes, you can actually do something that does have a, a definite impact on the landscape. We want to protect the water, we want to protect the land, but we also want to provide the uh, recreational experience. Understand those rules about staying out of water, to use respect, clean up your garbage, don't harass the wildlife. So what people can do is use an app that's available to anybody. It's called the Alberta Watercourse Crossing Inventory app and you can download that on your smartphone, and you can carry out your own assessments at any of these crossings throughout the province. And all of that information feeds into a central database that people like Trout Unlimited Canada and provincial government and other agencies have access to, to help prioritize restoration opportunities. Humans are part of the landscape, we use the landscape, we recreate, we, there are forestry, oil and gas, um, you know, we're out here and we have these road networks and we have infrastructure and it's great because it allows us to do human things, but we have to recognize that what we do on the landscape has an impact on the watersheds and specifically on those streams and the, and the animals that live in the water.